मंत्रे वर्तमान स्वयं धीरा पंडित मन जंघन्यमी मूढ़ा अंधे नीयमाध्या मंत्रे वर्तमान स्वयं धीरा पंडित मन जंघन्यमी मूढ़ा अंधे नीयमाध्या मंत्रे स्टीप दिन इग्नोरेंस बिलीविंग देम सेल्स टू बी वाइज एंड लर्न Swayam dhira. They proclaim themselves as wise. The question is, who calls you a wise? I call myself a wise fellow. That is the difference between how an ignorant fellow claims and how a a a, a true wise man. In fact, in the Bhagavad Gita, he says, uh, a pandita ha, a a Brahmana. He calls you a wise man, not not you proclaiming yourself, believing themselves to be wise. and learn it fools wander away suffering again and again they stray away janghanyamanaha paryanti they ramble they stray away they wander away how indeed as the blind led by the blind andhena niyamanah andhena niyamanah means blind led by the blind i'm trying to give you the sanskrit words which convey the meaning sometimes in the english words has a limitation but moment you get to the authoritative sanskrit root you have a little edge those who have a little advantage of language will see the depth there avidhyaya mantare vartamana swayam dhira panditam manyamana those who are acquainted with the scriptural study those who are acquainted with the vedic study they would be very familiar with this mantra in fact this is a very famous oft quoted mantra because the message is so important that this same mantra appears in the kathopanishad and the brihadaranyaka upanishad the same mantra appears in the kathopanishad and the brihadaranya cooperation and what is that which is so relevant here he says avidhyayam antare vartamana they are existing in steeped in avidya steeped in ignorance such a such a dangerous state it is to be in ignorance avidhyaya avidhya is ignorance and many people out there are capitalizing on your ignorance they make use and adv- take advantage of your avidhya so the ignoramuses blindly follow the the ritualistic practices which are impounded by the propounders those who propagate these ritualistic practices the ignoramuses out of fear they 
blindly take to what has been said. And because you do it, I do it. The blind leading the blind. Tomorrow, if I were to perform a ritual, and out of fear of performing that ritual, because out of respect and regard to the tradition and conform to tradition, I blindly come and be a part, I take part in that performance. And it, please, is not, now please, we must understand here it is the, the text is the Vedic authority. The text is not trying to demean or destroy tradition. Here it is trying to, what is it being highlighted? We must get that right. Otherwise we may think, why are we sounding so negative and pessimistic? It is not, please. The whole objective of the text is when you use anything as an end in itself, it doesn't serve any purpose. Everything in life should serve as a means to an end. The end is to attain that moksha, attain that enlightenment, to attain that state of Atman, that state of self-realization, that Atma Vidya. And anything that doesn't take you to Atma Vidya, anything that doesn't take you to help you to attain that state of Moksha is a Vidya. You are caught up in it. So everything must catapult you to get to that state. Everything must help you to get to that state of enlightenment. In fact, it is a subtle message, but if you recall the, the very famous mantra, the verse from Atma Bodha, please share, ma. You know, the, every day in the morning we chant, so I believe you should have chanted this morning as well, where in the second verse of Atma Bodha, Adi Shankaracharya, Spells it out so beautifully. I'm just getting Gajima to share, but you are very familiar with it. Please, all of us chant along. Bodhonya sadhane brohi sakshan mokshaika sadhanam Pakasya Vahni Vajnanam Vina Mokshona Sedhyati. Once again, Bodhonya Sadhani Bhyohi Sakshan Mokshaika Sadhanam Pakasya Vahni Vajnanam Vina Mokshona Sedhyati. Bodhonya sadhane bhyohi sakshan mokshaika sadhanam. Of all spiritual disciplines, knowledge of the self is verily the direct means for liberation. You may do all whatever you want to do, but devoid of Atma Bodha, which is the knowledge of the self, there is no liberation for you, just like fire for cooking. Liberation cannot be attained without that knowledge of the self. Akasya Bhaktinivagnanam Vinamukho Nasitya. This is what I was referring to. This knowledge of the self is the antidote for ignorance. Wherever there is lack of knowledge. Okay, now I would like to ask you, those who are steeped in these practices, what is it that they don't get to do? Those who are involved in the way practices, what is it that they don't get to? I hope you understand my question, Ramji. Those who perform 
are those who are introduced to these practices. What is it that they don't get to do? Considering the context of the mantra, he's saying these are the people, the blind lead the blind. They may not be. Um, they may not be using their uh, intellect. They may not be thinking about it. Yeah. They will not encourage you to question or think or use your intellect. So they they stifle the intellect. Intellect is just locked up and put inside. Yeah. So you don't question why it is. What it is. Like the other day, somebody sent me a, a certain ritual that is performed, and my opinion was asked why is this ritual being performed of this Pitruloka, that chanting, this one? What is it? How is my action connected to their depart, the departed soul, and where is rituals are practiced? I said, I'm glad you're questioning. You, they will not have any answers because they don't have answers. They will not allow you to question. They are just performing these rituals. This, this yajna, that homam, this ritual, that performance, this has to be done that way. Just, that's all. And out of fear, people do it. How, how is my action connected with the departed soul? Have I come with that person into this birth? Every human is born because of his or her own vasanas, isn't it? I have developed a relationship in this birth. Why has that person gone? Because that person has exhausted his vasanas, his prarabdha vasanas and moved on. What will my action do to appease his? Appease him or appease her after he is gone? I can't do anything when you're alive to appease you. What can I do anything to appease you afterwards? If I'm living in a hell, it's my world I have created. If I'm living in heaven, it's my creation. What am I responsible for your hell or heaven in the, in the, in the waking world, sir? Isn't it? Can I be responsible for your hell or heaven, Ramji? No, sir. It is all... Everyone has his own account. Yeah, if I want to dig a grave and get, sit, sit in the grave, who told you to dig a grave? I did, did I tell you to dig a grave? Don't blame me for it. Oh, I am living in a fallacious house and enjoying life. Who has told you? Are you living because of me? You have created it. Isn't it? But one question, Guruji. <laughs> No, uh, all these rituals are also prescribed in some Vedas. They say, they call them Vedic rituals only, right? So how, if you know, because that is the argument they will use that these are all uh, as per the Shastras only, they will say. Mm -hmm. So how do we negate such thing? How do we counter such an argument? Because this is Vedanta is talking of uh, this that the Vedas, Vedic rituals may not be the root. I mean, you said that these rituals also give you some temporary uh, gains, and uh, but they will not take you to the ultimate uh, uh, thing. But um, I think more and more people are getting steeped, more and more steeped into these rituals uh, as the time progresses. Instead of getting evolved, people are actually going backwards. But no, how do see, we... As a... Yeah. yeah, see, I, I, as I told, the first thing that if I introduce spirituality to you, I introduce it through the rituals. Mm. So that's how the uh, spiritual organizations are doing it in a mass scale. Everything is, you know, mega size. Mm. They want, they'll perform some rituals and they get you involved in it. But you must appreciate it's the same way the textbooks which have prescribed these rituals are denouncing it. Mm. So the Shruti, the Shruti is the superior textbooks which are denouncing the Smritis. The Smriti are, which is mentioned in the next verse, in fact, the next verse, uh, in fact, in the 10th verse, he's going to talk about the various 
uh, ishta purtam manyamana varishtam you know in the 10th mantra where he talks about uh, sacrificial rites the charitable deeds and uh, the various uh, uh, rituals of you know constructing temples and it must be constructed in this manner you must feed the poor all these things are in the smritis but if you understand the shruti which are the superior textbooks they denounce the shrutis so they are relevant to the extent they introduce you they are extent to the extent that they carry the message there is a deeper message they are carrying the message when you chant listen to these vedic mantras when you perform these rituals they carry a deeper import you can't dismiss them and throw them away and say no they are rubbish no 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 that is not the intent but when you perform them without knowledge you are steeped in avidya so as i refer to atma bodha there is no spiritual attainment without the gnanam without the knowledge of the self is nothing so what we are giving here in this classroom is the knowledge in its purest form to you now what you have to do is you will have to bring in a certain element of bhakti devotion through the ritualistic practices which is your constitution inject this knowledge into the practices you are doing and evolve from there you should not use this knowledge to denounce it nor disregard what you are doing that is abuse of knowledge to use this knowledge to bring to give a new meaning to create a new dimension to something which you have upheld till now you you have some regard for it i am not saying disregard it but look at it from a different perspective look at it as a means to an end but these rituals by itself are an empty shell without knowing the contents is like i am just giving you a container without any contents you would sue a case against me when i am trying to market butter cookies and i give you beautiful boxes of butter cookies and you get so carried away by the packaging the contents the source and ingredients and you buy a few boxes of the store but when you open them is empty there's nothing in it the box and the contents are two, two different things huh? yeah your interest in the contents only based on the packaging so these are the exterior aspects which are conveying the deeper philosophical message so when you perform the rituals the karma kanda without the knowledge it is empty shell you will only get punya without knowledge with knowledge you will get moksha go back to the second mantra atma bodha so the knowledge is that quintessential difference just like as we know don't we say the knowledge is an antidote for ignorance avidya what dispels ignorance is knowledge so what we are giving here is the purest knowledge but if you have to know how to delicately and wisely use this knowledge to inject it into your ritualistic practices that you are performing whatever ritual like even we chant a mantra it's a ritual but do i understand what does the chanting of the mantra mean you may do gayatri mantra like we did we did worship the sun god in the morning in the retreat we all experienced that why are we worshiping the sun god why are we worshiping the annam before prasadam we call we the moment you worship it, it becomes prasad then there is no more indulgence it can be 10 items it can be 100 items why are you complaining the standard feedback we got from the retreat feedback when i went through everybody complained of food because you indulge you complained of food you practice self control you will not complain i didn't complain of food i i noticed that there's more food who told you to eat more oh so much food is being wasted how does it matter to you so much food is so many things are wasted all over the world are you sitting and moaning about it during this festive season of ramzan so many people are uh, so many more creatures are slaughtered in the name of religion are you sitting and moaning about it condolence meeting are you ca- calling for what are you worried about 
in the name of religion in so many things are happening so why are you complaining about the moment you worship food you don't indulge so i am i am not uh, letting go of my any frustration here i want to tell you tell you that any ritual is a means to convert ordinary action into into worship but unless until the content which is conveyed through the practice is not related is not tapped it is an empty shell without the contents yes sir but the knowledge is never to demean or denounce or disregard the ritual it is not meant for that it is only meant to help you to perform the ritual and elevate yourself and with only objective of transcending it at some point the difficulty is that sir 95% of the people follow rituals the level of rituals which we can't even imagine you know if you i will just uh, take one minute to explain that we went to kamakshya temple in gauhati you go to the temple there is a separate place to sacrifice animals mm. and uh, when we entered they were just cleaning all the blood and all that so when we went inside near the devi there were two heads of two buffaloes now what do you call that it is the highest form of avidya or is it uh, is it a ritual on uh, which gives them some punya and moves them towards uh, uh, self realization eventually i so can that is, be... that is i am just saying that that is one level of ritual the other level of ritual maybe just a small yagna you do and then you offer uh, Uh, you know ghee and uh, all those things that is a different type of but what i am saying is that 95% of the people have to be educated on this otherwise it is really becoming too much in the world today to a point where it becomes uh, you can't relate to it yeah you can't you can't you it defeats the very purpose of uh, humanness or spiritual spirituality is is completely non existent it's it, it's in fact contradicts so it's blatant abuse of lack of using of intellect you're almost abusing your intellect where you don't want to think but it is so easy to push people towards such things sir out that is fear. what that is what out the gurus fear. and the leaders are doing many of them are doing that, that out of the fear they are instilling that fear and our regard for uh, this tradition they are encashing and that capitalizing on your ignorance that's all that's going on yeah and some some people are just making advantage and furnishing out of it. and these don't come cheap you want to perform a ritual this all this is prepackaged it's all packaged yeah. package package deal and you don't mind paying that kind of uh, uh, money to get that kind of rituals performed and don't come cheap i don't know, i'm not thinking against them you will think twice of uh, promoting this wisdom but you will not think twice in terms of performing that ritual you will go and do it is yes a different level of avidya i'm sorry to say that lakshmi ma i hope you have got your audio sorted out hi phone hi phone okay can you hear me can you hear me the problem is till now we couldn't hear you now we are hearing you more than once you are uh, compensating okay. for the old time huh? oh no my god oh my god oh my god 
my you better shift to india ma is better to listen to you in person than in phone phone thank you 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 thank you
And if this balance is not struck, it would have its own consequences. Now, when you asked me uh, about uh, uh, the performance of uh, Pitru prayers, Pitru prayers, or, or as Somya also is saying of the Pitru dosham and things, now uh, I I would leave you all. I I would not have any say in that. Mm, uh, I, I don't in a classroom like this. I don't decide for you what is right, what is wrong, whether you should do or you shouldn't do. My job is to, to tell you to use your intellect and you come to your conclusions. Because I don't want to be pointed tomorrow that you are telling this to do and do. I will never do that. But I also rationalize with you and I did comment earlier, every individual comes into this embodiment, into, takes up a birth to exhaust his or her own vasanas and everybody's journey is individualistic. Please understand that. Everybody's journey is individualistic. I have nothing to do with my parents or my siblings or my family or my child or family, nothing. My purpose is to burn my vasanas because I want to burn my vasanas. I've got into a family. What has the family got to do with it is my vasanas, no? No, in the event, once I have burned my vasanas, I will, uh, I'll move on. Now, what has it got to do with you? It has got nothing to do with, with anybody. There's nothing, in me, me remembering my ancestors is only to imbibe the values that they have lived and I have to emulate them. But not merely to get caught up that I will perform certain rituals and their sins are purified. And if not, I will incur a sin. This sounds illogical for me. Whether I want you to do that or not, that's up to you. But when you use the, the sharpness of your intellect and try and rationalize with it from philosophically, there is no ambiguity about it. So don't fall a prey, I would say to anything that is quoted just because it exists, but it's for you to take it in entirety and see it and examine it in the backdrop of this knowledge. Like I take this document and examine the backdrop of this knowledge of the light. So keep the wisdom in the backdrop and examine everything that is said there. And then come to your conclusion. I'm not accepting or dismissing anything. Examine it in the light of wisdom. And if it makes rational sense to you, do it. But at, at no point would you be, you should fall a prey to fear or insecurity or consequences. Now don't do that. No man of wisdom will compel you to do things. So don't be compelled to do things. That's why I said the question, those who propagate karmakanda, they don't let you question or think or use your intellect. They win over you by sheer authority and the sheer masses. Everybody's doing it. Blind, leading the blind. That is the trademark of their marketing tool. Watch out for that. I, I understand, Guruji. But uh, when you are in, like, I also know that we are not supposed to unsettle. If it's a family thing, right? Uh, the prayers, we are not supposed to unsettle. So with this knowledge, we participate and let others, like you say, it's very individualistic. Whatever the reason they do it, for <clears throat> whatever bhavana they cho choose to take, so let it be. Yeah, that's my conclusion. I, I don't want to unsettle people with what I think is right or wrong, like you rightfully said. But uh, with this knowledge, we will abide by the family decision. That's your choice, Ma. I, and I, yeah. and I, I, I have no say in that. It's, it's individualistic. Isn't it? I, I'm with you on that, but I'm saying uh, you should not unsettle. That's right. So don't, don't, Force people to do out of fear, nor to unsettle them with your knowledge. Yeah. That, Either thing is wrong. That is. Don't, the... don't go them and give a lecture and say, what 
<laughs> what are you doing and unsettle them nor you, you nor you do it out of fear so both no. of it is wrong so let people let's say there is a balance of both injection of both it, it is so difficult when they play with emotions you see that garuda purana it says like uh, the departed will be in unrest then you think are you been ungrateful you don't know so many things and is that uh, compromising on their those kind of things play a lot on the psychology of people and and i don't blame them but whatever it is well, yeah you're repeating yourself i think we have done we have covered yeah, the point yeah. uh, please ponder over it okay right thank yeah. you yeah thank you yeah, hari ji yes ma yeah i feel that is mainly because uh, we have not clearly defined or we have not clearly understood what is vidya and what is avidya what means an action and avidya if we now the earlier upanishad which you taught us namely ishavati upanishad very clearly says avidya leads you to overcome the death and vidya helps you to become immortal so the rishi very clearly tells that you practice vidya and avidya together so we have to clearly define because any action per se cannot be included either as vidya or avidya it all depends on what is the intention of the action that what is the what is the goal that we are aiming from this action it's very clearly it says that we have to combine vidya and avidya so that we reach the ultimate goal it is a verse 11 of ishavasya and verse 14 vidya and sir, avidya please i have i have a time and again say stated sir we don't know i don't know what ishavasya upanishad say No, we are not. No, we, we are, are not at your. We are not at your level, Hari Ji. Please do no, not no, do this. No, we are no, now. I don't know which is eleven and fourteen. I don't know. No, what we are. About. We are talking about Vidya and Avidya. Mm -hmm. I am only telling that we are also referring to Garuda Purana and other shastras. I am so not referring that, to. Yeah, I am not referring to Garuda Purana. See, this is something which we you have taught us that we have to combine Vidya and Avidya together. So I am not. You are putting words into my mouth. I am not saying so in the context here. Now I am not saying what you are saying is wrong, Hari Ji. But uh, no. But uh, then it becomes difficult for us to when because we have learned all these things from you, different uh, Upanishads. So we cannot uh, separate when we are studying um, Mundaka. so we have to ignore isha was here that we cannot yes uh, yes yes i would i would want you to ignore and read only mundaka i am teaching mundaka to you listen to mundaka uh, doesn't matter i i i myself don't know what isha was here said i will not do this kind of uh, no i am what you are doing is not wrong but in a classroom like this when you refer to what was said avidya and vidya must be now you are bringing a new concept vidya and avidya must be uh, stay no, together because that is because we are using the term vidya and avidya and uh, so my my doubt or my confusion it's i am a student in the class i have got my own confusion please so please, i am means. yeah so i don't understand what is vidya and what is avidya okay. i am not that you can ask that you yeah. can ask independently yeah. ask doesn't matter which upanishad say which mantra says yeah, that yeah i i i you can ask me yeah i have right. not understood so the question Okay. What is vidya? Asking, what is avidya? Uh, you are asking simple, blunt question, sir. What is vidya and avidya? Right. I will answer that question now. Vidya, as we uh, uh, mentioned, is the philosophical implication, the knowledge that is conveyed. I can convey the knowledge through the direct means, which is the scriptural study, or through the performance of a ritual so when you perform a ritual like when you salute the national flag it instills national consciousness when you 
perform a ritual of putting a tilak on your forehead, it symbolizes awakening of the third eye. One is a philosophical understanding, other is the mere performance of putting a tilak on your forehead. So every ritual has a message to convey. with. So There's a philosophical message. So the philosophical message or the knowledge that you draw is the vidya. Avidya is to steep in any practice without understanding its deeper implication. So you are just caught up in the mere ritual, the exterior, without understanding the interior, what is, is being conveyed. So this is the difference between vidya and avidya, which I thought I brought it up earlier in the concept of building this uh, concept. So if you perform the mere ritual, without understanding its significance. I took the example of when you worship food, when you chant a prayer before food, it becomes prashadam. It is no more an avenue for your sense indulgence. You don't fall a prey to your tongue thereafter. You don't give a license to your tongue to indulge in food. To arrest that indulgence, you do chant the mantra. Brahmarpanam. Brahma Havihi, Brahma Agnav, Brahma Nautam, Brahma Evatena Gantavyam, Brahma Karma Samadhina, Aham Vaishvana Robhutva, Parina Deha Mashita, Prana Pana Samayukta, Pacham Yannam Chuturvidham. When I chant that mantra, it is killing the Asura of indulgence in me. I am performing a prayer before I eat Prashad. What? Where is the avenue to licensely indulge in sensual pleasure to feed your body and senses? It is killing the spiritual element in that mantra. If I indulge, I have no meaning. It's like I'm sacrilegious after if I indulge in that food after performing a prayer. You have not understood what that whole purpose is. So that is avidya. Vidya is knowledge. I hope I have answered the question, sir. Does it satisfy you, sir? This is clear and there's nothing wrong. There's nothing contrary to what your understanding is. This is Vidya and this is Avidya. The highest Vidya is knowledge of the self and you and in as we quoted the second mantra of Atma Bodha, you cannot attain moksha without knowledge of self. So everything else is one side. The knowledge of the self alone which is Vidya on one side. All right. Siddha Ramanji. Aryam, this uh, over time, you know, this rituals are taking precedence over knowledge. I feel is because of uh, selfish enrichment, desire people in the materialistic world, people want more and more. So that is the, what is driving people to be more okay. religious. Absolutely. They are, um, sir, your, view, your video is muted. If it's for a reason, we appreciate it, but uh, we can't see you. Yeah. In fact, as you rightly said, Situji, the mantra also says, Pariyanti, you know, these people ramble, means they, they stray away. The fools stray away. Means straying away from the truth. They are not taking the path from the truth. It's like when you have a right road, you are going away from the path. As a, uh, you know, Chagaraja Kirtana, Chakkani Raja, Margam Ulundaga, Sandula Ye Doro Manasa. You know, the royal Margam is there. Royal path is there. And you don't take that and you get into by lanes and get stray away. You get caught up in the uh, wrong parts and wrong ways. So we are these people, are responsible for these things. See, you we are yourself are responsible. Selfish, yes. selfish. Because Ramana Maharishi throughout life he did perform a single ritual. Even when mother died, he didn't do anything. All okay, sir. So this moment onwards, you will not perform a single ritual. Masantama, where are you? Uh, Tell me the day Setuji performs even a single ritual. I am going to come into his life, into your house, and then he will face consequences. I, I do. Okay. Yeah, and then, and then, no, don't tell me this. Sir, you should not 
I, why I am coming very critical at what you said is, <laughs> would you follow what others did? You should never ever follow what others did. The great Ramana did not follow a single ritual. Is that a yardstick? Or what Lakshmi Maharaj, am I to perform the uh, Pitru Puja? Who is a yardstick? What is the fine? What is the thing? Taking what is right? Because he is enlightened. See, he is enlightened. Sir, don't, don't you are you're adding little more masala into the tea. It's going to taste very beautiful. I know it's a masala. Normal tea has become masala chai now. But what I'm saying is, what is right for one may not be right for others. Just because the great Ramana did not follow a ritual, is that the path for me? Just because some Purana says something, is that right for me? So where are we coming to a conclusion, sir? There is nothing as right and wrong per se, but how you take to what you are practicing, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, try to inject this knowledge, start operating on intellect. You will know what is the right balance for you. Isn't it, sir? I can't unsettle you, nor can I impose certain things on you. Nor are Shastras doing so. What is less for you may be more for me. Why say versa? Who is this standard? How much ritual to perform? I may not do any ritual. In fact, there, there's very, if you ask me in my life, my the percentage of ritual is very minimal in my life. But the percentage of knowledge is very high. I'm constantly dabbling with this knowledge, constantly imbibing, constantly brainstorming, you constantly doing swadhyaya. So am I to say, oh, please take me as a yardstick and do what I do? It can't. It should never be that. And yet, was it not me that who told you other day, Ji? It's one year next month of the institute that we had inaugurated. And last few days ago, I had called Sayyiduji particularly and told him that I'm still reminded, it is so fresh in my memory, the day we performed the homum on the 9th of April 2022. It's as if we did it two days ago. And I said, to revive that, I would appreciate if we can perform the home coming around that time and make it a once in a year ritual. So we perform that home and uh, see if we can happen. Now, there is a striking, I'm striking a balance as an institution as a person, what my needs are, what helps me evolve. What is right, what is wrong? It's nothing right or wrong, it is subjective. How can I use it for my evolution? Use it as a means to an end. And what can? what is the quintessential element that will help me evolve is the knowledge. If the knowledge is absent, it is the blind leading the blind. That's all the mantra is saying. You will be you will stray away. You will be steeped in avidya. You will think this is the highest. So ensure that. Ensure there is knowledge. In fact, the quotient of knowledge must outweigh the rituals that you perform. Remember this. Just like, sir, you're, you ask often, remind us. 80-20, no? 80% reflection, 20% knowledge. Similarly, the proportion of knowledge must outweigh the, the performance of the rituals. Then you are safe. But if that if it becomes lopsided, then you will get stuck in this state. Uh, again, I'm saying it is not to be misunderstood, misread. The Shastras are not belittling the rituals. They are only trying to tell us to understand the deeper inner meaning. In fact, recently somebody 
had connected with me and said sir my daughter is getting married i want you to come and give us lecture from the mandap because the bride and the groom want to know what are these vedic rituals what are these mantras what is going on i want you to be there he said i am not a pujari to in fact they said can you perform the wedding i said i am not a pujari to perform the wedding please that is not my role no 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 forget it. we'll find a pujari to perform i want you to give us a pep talk after the tali is tied what rajima she is saying uh, like this like this that too for 5 10 minutes guruji Ah, whatever. So five ten minutes. They said, "I want you there. Everything will be taken care of. Please come." But we want you to speak from the mandap, address the gathering, because nobody knows what mantra is chanted, what muttered, what is done, what it implies, what is going on. We want some knowledge to be shared. I said, "I can understand where they are coming from. Whether is it the right?" way to do it we are trying to figure it out what's the right way to do it or not but i think we all need to be very careful how we take the message you know you have to do it yet you have to not get caught up in it that kind of a catch 22 situation and this thought would continue as i said from the 7th till the 10th and 11th mantra he is continuously going to pound this idea so that you stand up and take note but as you all would say as it is you also lastly said the mere rituals have taken precedence over knowledge and people have fallen a prey to it but the moment knowledge comes in that becomes your safety net you will not get caught up in whatever ritual you perform right and i have just been informed that uh, we've had uh, ramnath garu uh, join us today i'm sorry sir couldn't couldn't interact with you but uh, i'm glad you could be a part of the satsang today look forward to seeing you in the subsequent sessions okay thank you we'll come back Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamevavashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om